It's dropping because the panels are getting hot. All right, so it's time, it's time to get rid of these 400 watt panels. We've got 570 watt bifacials and those are so much better. So I got these two panels in series with each other running to just a little 60 amp charge controller. And this is my, um, this is my charge of big batteries so that when my leaf runs out of charge, I can actually get home still. Did you show it all off? So that pop, top panel should just pop right off now. And I bet you this one came loose at some point, probably bumped it with the forklift. I don't have to do anything to this. Got it. Don't mind my abusive panels. These guys are already misfits. All right, so I am gonna have to adjust uh, my rail here at the bottom. If you wanna come in and show. So those were 40 millimeter panels. So this guy here has a marking. Whoop. This guy here's got a marking where it's got set to 40 millimeters and that's the, the space for the panel to sit in the gap there. And that didn't work well. There we go. So, if I can get my T bolt back in, I can move that to 30 millimeters. These things want to be all fancy with their round bit, but that doesn't work well. Why is that all loose? All right, I need to find a, a good socket for that. It's just probably like a 13. I'm gonna hope that it's a 12 because I don't know where my 13 is. That's how that works, right? It's not a 12. Oh, uh, that'd be a half inch, right? Half inch is fine. All right, so that's sturdy, um, but I am gonna have to put, I don't know, I might be able to just swing these around. Um, so these panels, the old panels are 39 inches wide. These panels are more like 46. So I bet you I can just swing this up like this and that's gonna be enough distance uh, to get me to the edge of the panel. to loosen the mini rails or the clamps that are on the mini rails 
So those can move up. And then grab a panel. I got this. Look at that. That was a torque to spec right there. It was a three Yugga Duggas, right? Is that, is that a spec? That was one long Yugga Duggas, which is the same as three small Yugga Duggas. Solid. All right, now those guys, I tried to, what's cool is you got the cells. So I was like, you know, two and a, two and a bit, Two and a bit, it's a yeah, pretty, pretty close to center. That's assuming that my bottom rail was actually centered, my trim rail. I don't think it was. <laughs> so I need like 46 inches. So I'm gonna have to move that mini rail north, basically to the very top, is where these panels are gonna go. So preferably, I'll find the adapter for my impact and not have to do that with the hand crank. So I need to put this mini rail up at the very top and then I'm going to hope that that's high enough. I don't think it'd be tall enough because I measured over there and it had to be like right up at the top. All right, so I need 46 inches and that's, I can run the rail to the top, ow. And that'll be fine. I'll do it, I'll do it this way. And you guys can all laugh at me not being able to drive a lag in with the ratchet. Yeah, that's not going to work. go. All right. Oh, I need another panel. So even though these are tight, I might have to loosen them a little bit, but even though these are already cinched down, the other panels should just pop right in there. <clears throat> I should probably orient this one the same way. So my positives and negatives are in the correct place. One way to do that is a serial number put the serial number in the same place, which would be 
flipped over. I'm gonna loosen the, um, loosen the attachments on these mini rails real quick so that I can slide them up. Come on, buddy. Why don't you want to move? <sighs> oh. That looks a little awkward, but you know, it's probably because this one's off. <clears throat> Or maybe it's twisted wood. All right, and then apparently I lost both of my lids. Okay, so we're taking, we're taking bets. We had two, we'll, we'll leave time for you guys to make bets without money, because I don't want to get into that. We had two 395 watt panels we were figuring the best we've seen is 550 watts total from the two. We're using the same controller that we we're using before. It's not gonna max out on amperage. It's going to a 48 volt battery. It's a 60 amp controller. So if we do these two in series, these are 570 a piece. So we're going from, if the other ones were 395 a piece, that's 790 watts. We're going to 1140 watts. Now I just did the math and I'm like, well, seven, was it 783 is like our pure, if we get the same percentage, 68% off of these compared to the 395s, and we'd be getting like 783. So I'm going for, these are bifacials, they're newer panels, not by much. I'm going for 875 watts, is what I think these are gonna get when we pull them out into the sun in just a minute. We're using our fancy Unirac SFM Infinity clamps, which is totally overkill for this. All right, so we're gonna have fun. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna play this out as long as possible. I'm gonna set this up for painting, pointing away from the sun. We'll see, uh, see how good it does when it doesn't even have sun on the panels. <laughs> Let's see, where is that sun at? Oh, the sun's practically overhead. We'll do like right here. This is about as far away from the sun as I can get it. All right, now can I actually reach in there and wire this thing up? That actually was a lot easier than I thought. And this guy. Oh. Apparently I didn't need to undo that one. All right, and then this is a pure, purely in series. I mean, you know, with two panels, you're either in parallel or you're in series, I suppose. But yeah, positive of one panel goes to negative of the next. So this array will be sitting at about 104 volts open circuit. And uh, what are these things, like 13 amps or something, plus whatever their bifacial gain is? Hey, we, no. Come on. You know, doing MC4 connectors one-handed is a lot of fun. Okay. I mean, at least connecting them. Disconnecting them would not be any fun at all. Okay, we're generating. We're generating. You want to come see what we're getting from the backside? We're a little off, you know, 164.8 watts, which I mean, all things considered, all things considered, that's not so bad. All right, let's bring this around. What do we get for real? 
Is anyone bored yet? I'm going for A75, people, so I'm gonna just keep moving it until I get to A75. That's how this works, because I'm driving the forklift. Let's see, is that... All right, so it is hard to tell, but I think, I think right here is gonna be the best sun we're gonna get. We are, uh, what's today, like July 2nd. So we just hit summer solstice. That sun's way high up in the sky. Oh, oh, it's so close. Okay, so it's dropping. It's dropping because the panels are getting hot. That, that's what happens. But as soon as we brought it over, I missed it. It was 865 watts, so I missed it by 10 watts. We're down to 850 right now, so I'm sure it'll normalize here in a minute. But of course, we're summer solstice, so the sun's up at like, you know, 10 to 15 degrees off of center is where ideal, ideal tilt would be. Um, but dude, 850 watts is a lot better than the 550 we were getting on the two. Now, who knows, I might actually get my battery full in between needing it for my leaf. We'll see. We're at like 46% right now. And I'm sure everyone's like, well, why don't you just use the nice fancy inverter you've got sitting there instead of your charge controller? Because my pallet's only so big and I can only fit so many panels on it. So I'm only at 104 volts. This thing needs like 120 to even start. One day I'll find some smaller panels that are higher voltage and maybe with two panels, I can actually use the EG4 to charge. But for now, we'll just use this guy. He works fine. All right, so now that I actually have, you know, better power coming in, <clears throat> the whole point here is that when I do things like I did today, running an errand before I got to work, I uh, pulled off the highway and hit turtle mode in my car, which means I definitely don't have enough power to get home. So with a 6,000 watt inverter and I've got my open EVSC, I can actually charge my car at 6,000 watts, which with this degraded battery should take like maybe two, two and a half hours. 14 kilowatt hour battery should be about the same capacity as what's in my car and we'll see. Granted, it is still pulling in some power from the panels, so it's not gonna be an exact test to see how much capacity is in the battery compared to uh, my car. But we're pulling 820 watts here. It is almost noon. We have the the, the pallet facing east and the, the sun is coming right overhead. And we are like, what, July 10th right now? So just after summer solstice, what I'm trying to say there is that these panels are at a horrible angle to the sun, but still getting 820 watts off of 1140 total. Um, let's see what we're getting here. I did have the car plugged in a minute ago and hopefully you can see the screen better than I can. We got the battery down to 68% and we're pulling what does it say? 6.09 kilowatts from the inverter. Which, by the way, I've already discharged this battery 30% and I'm running over 6,000 watts out of the uh, EG Ford. I'm actually surprised it hasn't tripped yet, even at just a software level of like, hey, you know, you're really supposed to use me at 6 kilowatts, not 6.1. But um, it's working. We'll see how long it takes me to recharge this again, how many days it takes me to recharge this again, because it won't recharge today after dumping it all into the car.